Hello friends! Slightly different way <laughs> of me doing a video. I thought with this particular card or set of cards it would be easier to just explain as I go rather than do all the filming and then splice it all together, voice it over, etc. So I've been fiddling figured out what I want to do and then thought I would just talk while I make the second card because when I have all the supplies out why not make two as I like to say. So these cards are not going to have any stamping which is weird for me. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice doing all wafer dies. Um, I don't have this set label but I'll have it listed and linked. It's the love um, wafer die set from Simon's Stamp that just came out in the Love You release. So it's got the letters and the heart. I have Simon's Slimline Nested Rectangles and then I have a mixture of some of Simon's cardstock, some Doodlebug pattern paper. Um, this pattern paper is old. Not Well, not old, old. It's from the, the Love Notes collection. Is that what it's called? Yeah. The Love Notes collection that came out last year, I think. And as usual, i pretty sure I ordered the entire collection and have been hoarding it ever since. So I thought it was rather fitting to use it with this. So I've got the largest rectangle from the Slimline Nested Rectangle set. I'm going to die cut my little bit of pattern paper with that and then the actual letters these are roughly like roughly eight inches I like the length of these so it kind of gives you a little bit more leeway but it also makes it so if you did like an A2 size card you could stagger the letters really easily if you wanted to do that I wanted to make some slimline cards so that's what I'm gonna do and to make my life a little easier since I already did this. And this is also why I don't do life anymore. It's because the dog's barking and the kids are usually making a bunch of noise, all that fun stuff. But since I have this first one already done, I can then start just kind of lining it up. So you can, as always, do kind of whatever you want with this, but I'm just doing that and then a little bit of purple tape with these. And then, ooh, always want to make sure too that I have everything like straight. This is where I like having my grid lines. I'm just kind of lining up the wafer die with the grid lines. And then I can tape that down. And then I might as well do all of my die cutting at once because it's easier that way. So then the next one I did was pink. Oh, so anyway, I was, I measured out my pieces to eight and a quarter. I think that's what I did. Yeah, eight and a quarter inches tall because that's the size of this rectangle. So that was my reasoning for that was to keep things um, the same length as that rectangle just to make my life a little bit easier. So then if I do this, I actually don't need to, I can just quickly again line up the wafer die. So because these dies are not exactly eight and a quarter like they're just slightly shorter than eight and a quarter I'm just I've just centered them on the cardstock and then after I'm done die cutting them I'll just snip off that tiny little bit and you'll see that in a minute once I get all of these letters die cut and another thing you can do technically is keep all the pieces the same and then they'll just start stacking and you'll get a little more dimension but it will make your card a lot thicker or you could pop them up with it. yeah anyway anyway so L O and then pattern paper 
more Doodlebug pattern paper. I will link to everything like I always do. I do think at the moment, um, ooh, I have just enough, that these papers are sold out. I know the wafer dies that I'm using aren't because I try as often as I can to check ahead of time. Um, I can't control, you know, Simon's stamp being able to keep things in stock or when they restock that sort of thing, but I do try to check so I'm not showing things that, you know, aren't available at the moment, etc. But it happens. Things do sell out. Restocking is not easy. Um, that has been, uh, yeah, this one I don't think I have enough space on. That has been an issue um, for a while now because of everything that's been going on this year. Uh, FYI, restocking has been extremely difficult because supply and demand and then supply chains and shipping and manufacturing, all those things. Oh, I need to cut off a little bit more of that one. Um, all those things have been severely impacted. So it has done a lot. It has been very, very difficult um, for all the companies when it comes to getting, you know, more products manufactured, more things restocked, getting them ordered, getting them shipped, all that. It's, it's been nuts and hopefully it will get better soon, but we'll just see. It's kind of too early in the game to tell, really. So, anywho. Okay. So now we got that. Just kind of lining it up. Really, some of this, it doesn't have to be super perfect because you can kind of trim off any excess if your cardstock was a bit crooked or whatever, just depending on how you layer it. But I find if I take a little bit of time like this in the beginning, it's a lot easier to layer it all when it's all die cut. So if I do just like that. So then we've got the word and then we have the little heart. And I'm basically just lining things up, eyeballing most of it, <laughs> but then just lining up the wafer dies with one, whatever grid line I'm focusing on. So do that. And normally I would just re reuse the same piece of tape or pieces of tape like over and over again because you know I do things one at a time, but since I'm filming this a little bit differently, um, it's just easier. But all this tape, I just stick it to the edge of my craft mat and keep reusing it until it doesn't work anymore. Because why not? So there's all the letters. I'm going to put these ones back over here. And then I'm probably going to have to switch to the regular way to do videos and do a voiceover because, yeah, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to start die cutting. Yeah. All hell broke loose. <laughs> but I was able to finish the cards and now just doing my usual voiceover. So like the video title says, uh, this is the first of my 2021 Valentine card series. I will be jumping all over like I always do. I'm gonna have like just random videos, Christmas videos I'm still hoping to work on. Um, you know, like I do, I don't follow a schedule. My life does not allow that. <laughs> <laughs> but we make it work. So for those not familiar, when it comes to my Valentine series, I don't know what, I love making Valentine cards, but mine, like, they're not the, you know, traditional little, like, I love you Valentines that you get for your kids and that sort of thing. For me, my Valentine series, I just like making cards that say, you know, I love you, thinking of you, thank you, you know, that sort of a thing. 
just some of them have more of a valentine theme and the colors and that sort of thing, but I like to mix it up. And they're just, they're some of my favorite cards to make because they're ones I can use any time of the year, really. But I just like to, you know, sometimes do the pinks and the reds, but other times I will mix it up, make more masculine type cards or just non-traditional colors, images, that sort of a thing. So don't, it's not specifically like happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Some will say that sometimes, but more often than not, I just all include like a love you, thinking of you, miss you, that sort of thing. So I just really like it because I think it's just something to break up the, you know, the winter and the Christmas and that stuff. And then to do, you know, more of these sorts of colors and, you know, softer colors and patterns. But again, if you watch any of my videos, I break it up regardless. <laughs> like my last video was pink snowflakes. I just, I do what makes me happy. So I die cut all of those pieces and then I just adhered them on top of that rectangle I die cut with the largest of the slimline nested rectangles. And I just used my craft tacky glue. And then to make it say love you, I used this little I love you wafer die that came out I think last year. And I just used the you part, the word. And I die cut it from some white cardstock, die cut it three times, stacked it, and then um, and, and adhering it to the card friends so that it says love you. So I've got my like pattern paper and some pinks and red peeking out there. And then um, after I've got those adhered, I went through, I pulled out not just the pattern paper, but like my whole little stash of love notes. Again, if you watch my videos, I've done many <laughs> doodle bug hauls over the years. And I usually will get the entire collection because I just, I like to collect them. I like to hoard them. I used a lot this time. I'm kind of impressed with myself. You know, I don't mind keeping it and hoarding it. It makes me happy, but sometimes I like using it like I did here. So I'm using several of the little sprinkles sets that came out with this Love Notes collection and just kind of randomly placing them on these cards since they're so, I've said this before with slimline cards, it's like you got more room for activities. You have more room for embellishments. <laughs> <laughs> you can add more. So these larger sprinkles and I had a little tiny, little tiny hearts and some of the um, larger hearts just here and there throughout the uh, card front just to kind of give it that little extra something. And once I was kind of happy with everything where I had it placed, I'm going to make my card bases out of Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. So I cut my piece to seven inches. So it's seven by eight and a half. And then I'm going to score it at three and a half inches with my Teflon bone folder and then reinforce that fold really well with my Teflon bone folder. So these will be three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline cards. And then once I have my card bases, like I said in the beginning, I did, I wasn't going to do any stamping and I didn't. Um, for the insides of my cards, I'm going to use some stickers, something else I rarely use but I buy them I don't know <laughs> I bought the stickers the this large sheet comes in the 12 by 12 pattern paper pack so I used this fun little scallop one that matches that pattern paper that I used for the rectangle it just says like love you over and over again so I added that to the insides of both the cards and then the times I do pull out stickers I like them you know you just kind of layer them and create little little collections, little scenes, whatever. And that's what I did here. So I just used some stickers from this big 12 by 12 sheet. And I also have, of course, the mini icons. I have those little stickers as well. So I use those to create this little, you know, I use a little banner of hearts and, you know, little, um, the little birds on there, that sort of a thing. So I did that with the one card and the other one, I did something very similar. I would have just done the same because it's just easier, but you run out of stickers. That's why I love stamps so much, but sometimes these like stickers like the doodlebug ones, they're just so cute. So yeah, again, I love hoarding them. I love petting my collection and flipping through it and getting ideas, but I do love using them those rare times that I do. So anywho, <laughs> it just might take me a year or 10 to actually get to it. So I created my little scenes on the inside and then I'm going to adhere the card fronts to the card bases and that finishes off the card. I know, no splatter, no actual bling. These were die cut heavy and then the sprinkles were added. 
So I did that, but then I'm going to have some fun with the envelopes. So I have Simon's Slimline envelope die that came out in their December release. I showed in my Dece December, oh, I can't speak, my December release and review video, I like assembled an envelope with that waiver die. This is the exact same thing. The only difference this time is I'm going to use my craft tacky glue. Um, you can also, if you're not comfortable with liquid glues, you know, to adhere envelopes, that sort of a thing, um, score tape. Highly recommend. I'll link to the score tape that I use the narrowest width for an envelope like this. But all I'm doing is using my uh, scoring board and I'm using a Wendy Vecchi stylus tool. I'll link to that as well. It's just one of those things that comes in handy in my craft room. But I use the stylus tool to just reinforce the score lines that the wafer die puts in place so that the paper bends better, especially when it's pattern paper because it can crack. So I reinforce those score lines and then I'm just adhering the little flaps. I applied a little bit of liquid glue, my same craft tacky glue, and then just making sure I'm not applying so much glue that it's oozing out because that's the thing with liquid glues. If you apply too much and you're not paying attention and removing any excess is you could just, this will just be not an envelope anymore because it'll be glued together. <laughs> so I applied that little bit of adhesive onto those two narrow flaps and then just on the very edge of both those flaps, fold them down they're adhered and then I'm going to apply a little bit of adhesive to this bottom flap and that's it like comes together so easy top flap or side flap however you want to call it um I'm leaving until I'm actually going to send the card and then I'll adhere that into place most likely just score tape because it's quick and simple and that's it these cards are really fun to make um if you're watching this before January the end of January 1st 2021 you never know um, I do have a discount code. Simon's Wafer Dyes are huge sale right now. I'll have that info in the description box below the video, as well as on my blog and the links and the code and all that stuff. And then always the pictures and the supply list, all that will be on my blog. Check out the description box below the video. Stay tuned. I have a whole bunch more coming and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.